celebrity, true or false? You That's can't incredible. handle the truth. There you, oh, go. No. there you go. That's it. How do you guys do that? Magic, magic of editing. Television. Yeah, magic. Just, you say yeah. television, I say editing. You know, we just do you have a crack staff. It's, you know. Chris Chris must have something to do with that because that, that uh, No, he had nothing to do with that. Yeah. Okay. No. Not so much. You know, no, I don't think so. By the way, Chris went a little crazy this past week. Yeah, we but, have right, okay. we actually okay. are going to hit that. I all believe right, right. I believe okay. we have something uh specifically in store for that at the very end. Wow. Sort of an O. Henry like twist okay. at the very end of right. Celebrity True or False with Adam Scott first one up. Uh True or False, you were a deadhead as a teenager. I was. I went through a Grateful Dead uh, phase uh, as a as a teenager, like a pretty intense one. Like I went to see many, many how many dead shows. What do you think? What's the, what's the grand total number? Uh, probably seven or eight, but all in a matter of like you know eighteen months, and then I was kind of out of that phase. But I still love uh, Grateful Dead. Did you have tickets, or were you one of those asking for a miracle? No, like I would up have your finger as people were coming. <laughs> there were a lot in. of those. I know that. Because Have you guess been to what? Dead shows? Guess what? Uh, one of my first serious girlfriends of my life was a Dead fan. Uh -huh. and I've been to about 15 Dead shows. 15. Wow. I think one five. since that stage, I've probably hit about 15 because I've gone a couple, t a few times yeah. over the years. Did you, you? It's pretty fun, right? Yeah. The drums in space stuff where they were playing yeah. drums for like a half an hour was yeah. uh, not my bag. Sure. I was like, when is this going to end? Like, like, where's the chorus? That? Where's yeah, the hook? <laughs> they were just playing for just drums for like yeah. uh, but but. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ship of Fools is my uh, Ooh, number one. Oh, that's a one. good song. That's my number one yeah. dead song. I love just, you know, I got into them because Touch of Grey was like a top hit, sure. 10 hit. Yeah, that's yeah. when they really exploded again. Yes, commercially, yes. I still love that that song too. So you didn't need, and by the way, there are people who go to the dead because um, there's a famous uh, line, I need a miracle every day. Uh, they hold up their finger yeah. or two fingers. I need a miracle. They're hoping that somebody gives them Get tickets. A ticket. Oh. So you did not do that. They, no, they, because you, you I was still a teenager. So I would like get a ride with my parents and get dropped off out front. So we made sure I had my ticket and my, you know, money for a hot dog <laughs> and all that stuff. <laughs> Were you the only person dropped off at a dead concert? I remember like my that? dad drove me and a couple oh, yeah. of my buddies. <laughs> Where are you going? To to Laguna Seca and dropped us off out front and driving up, you know, in traffic, people were like, acid, you want some acid? You want to join? And I'm like, uh, dad, just right here is fine. Just right just, yeah. Job, I'll walk from here. He's like, what is this? <laughs> oh man. All right. Next up, uh, true or false, Adam Scott, you were initially intimidated on the set of Step Brothers because you'd never done improv before. Is that true or false? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I was a, a novice to comedy, really. Um, I mean, you know, I grew up, you know, a voracious fan of Monty Python, SNL, and all that stuff. Sure. But as far as like in practice, I had been doing mostly like dramatic stuff. And so I got Step Brothers as a fluke because someone had the role and fell out at the last minute. And they Who was had that? to cast Do it. Do we know? Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm at liberty to say. I don't know if they've oh. ever said it. Publicly well, I think, you know, I mean, we'll... it was a scheduling thing. It wasn't anything, okay. you know, like uh, weird. Uh, so so I was freaked out and had to kind of figure it out as we went. I, I, I equate it to learning how to throw the javelin at the Olympics. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got feral. The and, stadium and of people and all the cameras. Yeah, because you're doing it Riley. with John and Will and Mary Steenberger and Richard Jenkins and Catherine Hahn. Oh, that's right. Jeez. And I was just like. Uh, okay. And as far as improv goes, I was, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And, and, but I feel like at the end of those four months, I had started to, you know, figure it out. So uh, how much of that was improv? A, a lot. A lot of the movie is, is improvised. So a huge amount. You would do like a scripted take yeah. and then just screw around. And, and it was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. The, and, and it changed the way I kind of thought about work from there on out it's just about throwing it all against the wall and seeing what sticks and who cares if something doesn't work we won't use it we'll just do throw it all just do everything and screw around and then take the bits that work and couple it together into a, an awesome movie and i just had never really and i think you know that period of time when judd and adam mckay and those guys kind of came along and started making the, the movies in this kind of really loose different way yeah it really changed filmed comedy uh, uh for it for the better i think do you remember your favorite ad-libbed line from it adam scott where um, you're like you ad-libbed it can you can you say it 
on the show? I mean, or? the abs, uh, <laughs> the abs, I, I haven't eaten a carb since 2004 or something. That was <laughs> ad lived. Um, <laughs> There are, I mean, there are a, a lot. I mean, those guys, like Will and John, are like genius, right? Genius. Well, I mean, so Catherine Hahn's moment where she's coming on to John C. Riley that that was all ad libbed, where she was just saying one awful, nasty, sexually I mean, charged in the thing script, after another. She in the script, she does that, but yeah. I'm sure all the w incredible things she was saying, I'm sure a lot of them were Catherine because she is one of the great improvisers. <laughs> Yeah. Next one in, in that film, Step Brothers, true or false, Adam Scott, the family singing scene, you were actually lip syncing to an actor who was singing right outside the car window. Is that true? That's right. I can't sing, but everyone else in the in the car is singing live. Um, and <laughs> okay. I was the only one lip syncing. And the guy singing was right in front of me, and I was locking eyes with him so we would stay in sync. And he was standing there with a microphone just... <laughs> And we were, that's who I'm looking at the whole time. But everyone else was on pitch and incredible. And uh, I just couldn't, I, I, I wish I could sing it. And was it you who swerved the car or was that a stunt actor who swerved the car? That was a that stunt session? actor, okay, unfortunately. Very good. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, we were in green <laughs> screen safety. the whole time. Yeah, safety first. That is so funny, man. Oh yeah. my gosh. Uh, next one, uh, true or false, Adam Scott. Um, the uh, Mayfair Games developed a uh, play playable version of Ben Wyatt's game, Cones of Dunshire, but it was never marketed because it was too complex from Parks and Rec. Is that a true story? I would imagine. I mean, I think that the rules of that game were so insane <laughs> and purposely so. But somebody tried to... Somebody tried to kind of... You know how when Trump would just say something and then his administration would be like, Oh, yeah, 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 and try and shape policy around the <laughs> stupid thing he said. It was kind of like that. Like, they set all these confusing rules for comedy's sake, and they tried to develop a game that around those insane rules. Um, and I thought it was, like, going to come out, but it, it just never never did for whatever reason. So, I mean, Probably because it was too complicated. But uh, I just find that so funny that they you tried to actually make it work, yeah. and then they just they said, just screw it. Up. They just gave up. How much fun was it to do Parks and Rec for you? Oh, it was the best. It was the best. I really miss it, and I miss all those people. It was so fun. Uh, Adam Scott, last one for you here. Every April, uh, you get lots of good luck at the Masters tweets because people think you're the actual <laughs> golfer, Adam Scott. That's right. That's right. You do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and my very first like celebrity perk ever was before I was a uh, kind of known person at all, and... I checked into a hotel and they thought I was the golfer and I, they brought me into this room and offered me all these cool, you know, put me on the list for all the clubs in town and <laughs> offered me all this, put me in this incredible suite and all this stuff. Cause they thought I was, cause cool. you thought you were the, the master's champion, the master's champion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, have you ever tried to get a round of golf, uh, out of something like that? Yeah. And I'm, uh, terrible at it. Okay. Terrible. Terrible. So, so doesn't really work for you. I on would, that front. I would not be able to <laughs> pose as Adam Scott the let's golfer. See if, let's see if Adam Scott the golfer could pose as you. I doubt exactly. that as well. Maybe so. 